This is the only AI research assistant tool that you would need. This is an open source project that you can also self host. And in this video, I'm going to tell you how you can use this tool to create research articles, blog posts, even something like a small mini research paper. And also we're going to dive into a bit of technical detail about how this research assistant or the tool actually works. The tool name is called Storm, S-T-O-R-M. It's from Stanford. It's a research project at this point, but they've also hosted it for free, which means you can go try out and then write your research articles. So this is based on this paper. So the tool, the way it looks like is this. I asked the tool to create an article in the title of Transformers versus RNN in the context of LLMs. For those who are not familiar with deep learning, Transformers is an architecture which has been quite widely used in large language models, let's say like um, GPT-4, GPT-3, GPT-2, GPT-1. And RNN, which stands for Recurrent Neural Network, was quite something that was quite popular before Transformers took over the place. So I just wanted to create an article. So this is what Storm has created. So there is a summary and there is a background. And within background, you have got subtopics. So you can see the table of content here. So you've got title here, summary, background, comparison of transformers and RNNs, impact on large language models, challenges and limitations. It's a very Wikipedia style article, or you can say a research paper style article. And it uh, not just gives you like content, just you know, typically if you want something like this, you can go to ChatGPT and ask, but what it does particularly good, which not a lot of other tools do is, it also gives you the reference. So you can go see the reference here. And uh, I mean, Google, if you have used Google deep research, it kind of does something like this, but this tool is absolutely free. You don't have to pay for it. I mean, right now you can use it for free because trying to they're trying to collect your responses and use it for research. But later on, if you want to self host it, they have given the GitHub repo complete repo and then you can start using it. So first of all, I'm going to just kick off a demo and with that demo, I'm going to show you how to use the tool. And then we are going to look into the research part about how the tool is being built and what kind of things contribute to the tool. So first of all, let's go. So this is the interface. You've got two options. One is storm. The second one is co storm storm is like a single uh, perspective. Um, you have got like an article and co storm is like a round table con uh, conversation, very similar, like what notebook LM does whenever you give a particular topic. So I'm going to go ahead with storm. I don't want like a round table conversation and you can go here and ask any article type you want, like a scientific question, like a historic question. In fact, you can go to the discover section and see what kind of questions people have been asking. I mean, you see wide range of topics like perception of cybersecurity and e-commerce, recent studies in the system of fascia system and a lot of other things like rise of electric vehicles. So I'm going to go ahead and then ask, okay, one simple question. Why is, uh, let's say antibiotic, um, resistance, um, a big threat to humanity, nothing to do with anything I'm researching, nothing to do with this channel, just went ahead and then gave a topic. So why is antibiotic resistance, a big threat to humanity? So first of all, as you can see here, first identifying different perspectives for a research topic. That's its first step. It has got four steps. Second, it has started looking at for content on internet. And uh, meanwhile, it is asking you what is your writing purpose. So I can say this is going to be, and you can see that it is starting to finish browsing all these things. So I'm going to just give something please provide. Okay, this is going to be a research paper. Okay, so it has finished browsing the internet. So it's collected all the links. I think it's using Bing at this point, it has taken everything. And it's getting all the links, uh, the research papers, mostly like trusted uh, articles, but you can see like for a different topic, it goes to different information as well. So now it has started uh, organizing the information and creating an outline. And once it creates an outline, I think that is exactly where the workflow differs from a lot of other tools. Then it is going to write the article. So it's going to first create the outline, then write the article. And what you can also do is you can go see the brainstorming process. So right now for this particular case, they've created four personas. One is a basic fact writer and the role of the basic fact writer is basic fact writer focuses, focusing on broadly covering the basic facts about the topic. Veterinarian, why veterinarian? There is an animal. Okay. A specialist in animal health is well versed in the use of antibiotics in livestock. It's contribution to antimicrobial resistance. Okay. From a veterinarian perspective, a microbiologist perspective, a public health official perspective. These are the four different personas it has created 
for us to create the final article. So the, basically what this, the way Storm works is it's a, it's a, they ask back and forth question to these kind of people and then collect the article. So you can see here. So there is a question the bot is asking and the person is answering. Then there is a question that the person is answering. And this is exactly what is happening here. And finally, we have got the article here, the topic summary, background, causes of antibiotic resistance, impact on health, global perspective, public health policies, solutions and strategies. I'm mean, just like simply go see global initiatives. Okay, it shows WHO has this and um, national action plans, local and regional initiatives. It's a very, to be honest, like it's a very, very, very well written article. I'm not trying to say that you should use this for a uh, high school uh, essays or university essays, but it's a very well written article. I can't possibly write something like this in such a short span of time, like four minutes or five minutes. Right now it's free, um, but you can self host it. How do you self host it? There is this repo that you can go use it. There is storm. And if you go see storm, uh, one of the thing that would quite evidently look um, is you can see Omar Khattab who is also actively involved in developing uh, DSPY. So if you go to requirements.txt, you would um, you would naturally see DSPY as the first library. So they are the code base is heavily DSPY uh, based code base. But also if you go to knowledge storm and uh, if you go to storm wiki and if you go to engine, one of the things that you can see is like how these kind of different LLMs are used. And if you go to modules, now you would start seeing the different, the main sections of how storm is used. Uh, you have got a persona generator, like the one that we saw four personas were there. Then you have got the outline generation. Then uh, you've got the article generation. You've got knowledge curation, jumping directly into the paper. So if you go the way storm works is they have got two main sections. One is what they call as pre writing. The second one is what they call as writing. And, uh, they, they said they, insp they got inspired from how high school or university teachers would guide their students. So they're not going to help the students exactly write the essay, but they would play a tremendous role in designing the outline. And that is what they're doing. So in the pre writing stage, they're going to ask different questions and create the outline. And then they're also going to use the LLM and the research content and everything to finally write the full length article. So there are like three things, uh, direct prompting. So there are going to be different questions asked. Then there's a perspective guided question and asking. This is where the personas matter. And then there is this uh, conversational question and asking. So you go to, for example, in this case, a microbiologist, ask a question, come back. So you can see here in my case, this case, uh, there is an academic researcher. There's a question asked to an academic researcher, what they answer, get back what they do. So this is very similar, like what market research companies with focus groups, uh, very similar approach in this particular case. I believe, I strongly believe uh, this kind of paper could be uh, definitely adapted into something like a market research AI agent project. So if somebody's building a startup, you should probably use this approach there. But it's a very interesting approach, um, pre-writing and then writing. I'm going to finally show one more example, but uh, otherwise this is a very solid tool. So let's go to a new session and I'm going to just ask something that is quite relevant at this point. So why is uh, Jan 1st celebrated, celebrated as new year, even though Jesus was born on Christmas, December 25 is Christmas 24, I guess 24th. So I'm sorry if I'm making a mistake. So, okay. I shouldn't have any brackets. Cool. Start the research. So something that is relevant, what's the purpose? Uh, just for my knowledge. Okay. And uh, oh, just for my knowledge to write a post. So it's starting to browse the internet at this point, as you can see here. Um, so step two is uh, to start browsing the internet. And you, if you go there, you would see like a lot of libraries helping it to do that. So it's diff getting different articles, like uh, getting from Wikipedia. There is like some history related information about new year from Britannica, which is an encyclopedia mental floss, a blog that I used to read quite a while back, some, uh, Christianity related articles. Um, so it's collecting all the information about the question that we have asked. So the very first thing that you might have noticed that it knows that what is the topic that they have, we have asked. So where it should go look for things. 
I think that is the first most important information because you collect all this information. Now after getting everything, it is going to create the outline. So it's starting writing and drafting the article. That is the final step. Outline has been done. Now it is writing the actual article in there. So because this is not like a very strong research project, you can see the table of content is not as big as like the other items that we got. Summary, historical information, cultural perspective, theological consideration, historical events, and figures. So you can see the brainstorming process. Uh, we have got a basic fact writer, historical scholar, religious historian, a cultural anthropologist. That's a very interesting choice, to be honest. Um, the, okay, the question is, can you explain the historical origin? Okay, fine. Uh, historical factors contributed to the selection of December 25 as a date for celebrating this Christmas. How does it relate to the timing of New Year celebration? Okay, then different cultures. Very interesting perspective, to be honest. Now, if you see all these things, so you can finally go see the historical events and figures, what kind of things happened. So you have got uh, Pope, Pope Gregory um, 13, probably. So if you know the history of New Year, you know that uh, the calendar that we follow in the world predominantly is called a Gregorian calendar. It's, it's, a, it's a solar based on sun, not a lunar calendar. As far as I know, I think um, uh, Romans were using a lunar calendar, like a Julian calendar or something like that. So you can see that, okay, Gregorian calendar is what has ideally uh, been established. And uh, that is basically the fundamental of why January 1st. And you can see here. So his work positioned the birth of Christ as year one, further embedding the Christian narrative within the framework of the calendar. So it does a pretty good job. It does not hallucinating in this particular case. It does a pretty good job of explaining what it wants to explain. And I'm not, I'm not talking about this particular article in uh, this particular case, but you can see that it has done a pretty good job. If you want to use it for uh, publishing articles, papers, it's, I don't consider this to be a slop. It's not like a crappy work. Uh, I would say this is a high quality, um, uh, Ninton work uh, who would uh, do research and then give you something which would not be like easily possible if you are like a single person or like the research assistant or the intern is like a completely dumb person. Pretty good. Um, I'm looking forward to explore more into Storm, but I would say that this is a very, very solid research assistant. Probably the only one that you would need if you don't want to spend a lot of money. And if you want to self-host, if you want to like uh, run it as a product. And like I say, like this could be extremely useful in a market research situation. Imagine like you want to launch a shampoo. Like I don't know how many of you have ever worked with FMCG companies, but if you have ever worked with FMCG companies before they launch any product, they would go to a market research company and they would say that, oh, we want to launch a shampoo. Like, do you know what is something that people look for in shampoo? The market research company would create like a focus group, send a survey to a bunch of people, and then they would get the perspectives. Now, what you can probably try to do is you can have like a middle-aged, let's say a housewife woman. You have got like a college student, um, you have got like a mother and you have got like different personas and then make them talk to each other. And then finally create a research report that would say that what is that people look into in a shampoo when they buy, why would retention happens? And you can sell the report. Uh, this is a very successful business model uh, per se. So if you are trying to build something like this, let me know, I would love to know more about it. But for now, Storm is the only tool that you probably need. Let me know if you like the tool, what do you feel about it? If you have used anything else like Google Deep Research, but otherwise, thanks to the Stanford researchers for putting this tool out together and also making it open source for us to read the code base. See you in another video. Happy prompting.